Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And another mixed media card. <laughs> I had fun. I used some of the recently released Picket Fence Studios products, specifically this Sarah Girl image. Those of you that might have followed me for a long time uh, might remember I did videos way back in the day. That was my very first purchase of the Picket Fence brand is their girl images. They had a whole bunch of different ones. And I remember when I saw them on the, in the Simon Says Stamp store, I was like, add to cart. <laughs> so I did some videos using them and they're still, they're just, I love them. I don't know what it, I just, I love them so much. So when this one was released in the February, yeah, February Picket Fence release, I was so excited. I was like, they're back. I, I hope we'll get more because I just, I don't know what it is. I love them. So I used them or I used that image. I did coloring with my Olo markers, those that might have missed it. And I'll hopefully remember, I'll link to it at the end of this video. Um, I did a live video just recently, um, just coloring in the hex chart that I had purchased. Again, all that info will be in that video linked at the end. Um, so this was my first time actually coloring with the Olos and just a note, I'm well aware you can connect them. I haven't decided yet how I'm going to officially use them. I'm just using them as what I, little stublets, little half markers, whatever it's working. So I did a bit of coloring with them and then I did some mixed media and some stenciling and mushing with my oxides and all, I threw everything. Well, I could tell you, I, I did everything really. The only thing I didn't add was splatter. You know, but I added everything else. So this was fun. And like always, I will have links to everything in the description box below on my supply list. Just expand the description box. I'll link to that um, Olo video at the end of this one and keep watching. And I'll show you guys how I made this card. So I started off by stamping the Sarah girl image onto some Simon Says Stamp smooth white cardstock. So I just lined it up in my Misty and then inked up and stamped the image in um, Simon's Intense Black ink, which is an alcohol marker friendly ink. And after I stamped the image, I was like, hmm, there's some space along the top of this piece of cardstock. So I also pulled um, a few of the outline butterfly images from the new uh, wreath building butterfly wings stamp set because I was planning on using the sentiment from the set on the inside of the card and then I was like "Ooh, I'll add the little the little butterflies to the outside as little like embellishments so I lined up a couple of those on the cardstock as well and then same thing just ink those up and stamp those with that intense black ink so after I got those stamped, I'm going to color everything in with Olo markers. And Olo markers are completely new to me. I just recently got my hand on them. I know that the way I'm coloring with them is going to drive people crazy. <laughs> I haven't connected them. I haven't made up my mind yet how I want to connect them to be like a proper sized marker. So I just, I call these little stublets. They're just a half marker. Right now, this works for me. Um long term probably won't because yeah I can see myself maybe starting to have issues I was for the most part fine doing all this coloring this way like it didn't really aggravate my hands because I do have issues with my hands but yeah I just haven't decided I don't really like the idea of having two different shades on one marker so we'll just see what happens but so far so good so because these markers are new to me and I haven't and this is literally the first image I've ever colored with them. I went lightest to darkest, which when I color with alcohol markers, I don't do that. I go darkest to lightest. It's just faster and more convenient, but you definitely have a lot more control when you go lightest to darkest. And yeah, my, my just right out the gate first impressions so far, I'm, I'm liking them. They blended wonderfully, you know, laid down color. It was, it was good. It was good. I like the brush tip. That's about all I have to say so far regarding the markers because until I really you know really put them through their paces um but yeah my first impression with them they were good so I colored in um her skin first when I do color in people images I always it's just habit I do the skin first and then I go in and do the hair and that that just is what works for me so I 
did her skin. I did kind of a lighter pink, added a bit of kind of a blush there and then blended that out. Again, was quite happy with um, how the, the colors kind of layered onto each other. And then for her hair, I kept it super, super simple and I just used one color. Um, this is the one of the things I just really love about the Picket Fence girl images is the hair is incredibly detailed and I find I don't for me, I just don't need to do any fancy blending or anything like that because the, all the details are already there, you know, like it's just, it's there. So I don't feel like I have to do anything like special, <laughs> you know, to make it look good. It's like, oh, it's already done. Good. So that's all I did. I just colored it all in one color, super simple. So after I laid that down, um, I decided for the little like accessories, like the feathers in her hair and the butterflies to do sort of an aqua, um, combo because, was, and because I was like, did all her hair brown. I love brown and aqua colors together. They just look so nice. So again, that's what I did. And I kept, I did again, the lightest to darkest and then just went back in with my lightest to blend it. And I was happy with it. So Again, very simple sort of basic coloring. And, you know, sometimes that's just, that's all it's needed. So after I had the like aqua shades, I took the same brown that I used for hair and I just used that for the bodies of the butterflies just to make everything simple. And there's not a coordinating uh, wafer die set for the little butterflies. And so I just fussy cut those. It didn't take me very long. Um, yeah, I just use my little detail scissors and I move the cardstock more than the scissors and yeah, trim them out with my scissors. That was fine. The Sarah girl image does have a coordinating wafer die, which I of course used. There's also a sentiment with it too that I really like, but I went with another one for my card, but I definitely use the coordinating wafer dies because if I can avoid fussy cutting, that's what I'm going to do. So I taped the coordinating wafer die into place with just bits of washi tape so that it doesn't shift when I run this through my die cut machine. And so I've got my little butterflies trimmed out, the image die cut, and then I die cut some Distress White Heavy Stock using one of the double stitch layering rectangle dies, one of my faves. And I'm going to do some very simple ink smushing and I'm working directly on my glass um, surface. I've talked about this in some of my videos, surface matters when you're wanting to do ink smushing. If you want more like the speckly textured look, you need to use like a craft sheet, something that the inks are going to beat up on. However, I surprisingly, I know, did not want that this time. I just wanted kind of a more subtle background. So that's why I'm working on the glass because you can see the ink just pools up on it when you spray it with water. And I wanted it more subtle because I'm going to stencil over this, you know, and then add all the other elements. So I started with uh, vintage photo oxide ink and smushed it, sprayed it, smushed it onto the background, dried that. And now I'm using some of the new Scorch Timber Distress Oxide. Same thing, smushed the ink pad, sprayed with water, smushed my heavy stock into this, and then dried this layer. And then my final layer is going to be tumbled glass Distress Oxide ink. So it'll just give it some like texture and color and whatnot. And um, that's why I chose heavy stock as well, because heavy stock can handle a lot of water. Watercolor paper will work really nicely for this as well. So once I had all of my um, layers of color on here and I was happy with it, this piece of heavy stock is super like warped. If you've got the time and patience, you can just lay it, stick it under something heavy, stack of books, etc. Um, I don't have the time or patience. So I just use my mink machine. A laminator works too. <laughs> you can also just kind of bend the paper. Like paper doesn't have a memory. You can bend it, you know, flatten it out. However, I wanted this to be flat to make it easier to stencil over. This also helps if I want to stamp over backgrounds I've done like this. And you know, and the cardstock's all bendy wavy. Is yeah, I just get my mink machine turned on, run the piece through and it flattens it perfectly. And like I said, you can use just a, you know, laminator without a laminating sheet. I just, I just use a piece of parchment paper folded over and it flattens it out. Perfect. So once I had that flattened out, I'm just going to stick this to one of my little paper inking palettes and I'm using the, um, polka dot scarf stencil. I love this stencil. I love the stencil. So I put that over the background and then I'm using, uh, the chocolate frosting paper glaze luxe 
um, it's a good thing they don't add scent to their products. If they made this smell like, I probably would have tried to eat it. Don't eat the paste. Don't do it. But it really, it does look like chocolate. <laughs> it's got a bit of glitter to it though, too, which is kind of nice. So I just applied that over the stencil onto this background with my palette knife. Once I've applied this, I keep a container that has a lid on it so I don't knock it over. Um, of like a bit of like dish soap and water by my work surface and I immediately just toss the stencil and my palette knife into that so that it can soak otherwise I just take it straight to the sink and clean it off it's so much easier if you clean it immediately trying to clean paste that have dried on stencils not fun so I once I'm done applying it put the stencil and my palette knife into that um, container of soap and water I remove my background from the palette and then um, I just use my fingers to remove any bits of the paste that were going past the edges. You can also just let it dry and then trim that off with scissors. That works too. Like whatever, whatever suits the person. So I'm going to let that dry and then I immediately also wipe off my little paper inking palette and it's good to go. So letting that background dry. And then I had pulled out the Soar Butterfly Wafer Dye. I love this butterfly. It's huge. And I love it. And I die cut it from some Surf Blue cardstock. And then I stuck it to my paper inking palette. And I'm using Peacock Feathers and Uncharted Mariner Distress Oxide inks. And my little uh, pint-sized paper pouncers. I'm starting with the Peacock Feathers. And just blending it out. Like pouncing the ink on from like the center of the butterfly towards the edges of the wings and then I'm applying that uncharted mariner more towards just the center so I'm getting a similar kind of look to the butterflies that I colored with the Olo markers so just pounce that on kind of blended it a little bit more with the peacock feathers and then um same thing wipe off my little palette good to go so my background is dry I wasn't originally going to use the outline die that comes with this, but I ended up die cutting some vellum with that because the background is quite busy like that with the pattern and everything. So I die cut the vellum and then adhered them together with a little bit of craft tacky glue. So then that way the butterfly stands out a little bit more against that busy background. And then my sentiment is from that same double stitch layering rectangle die set. This is one of my favorites. I've used this one so many times and I just die cut this from scraps of that same um, surf blue cardstock and stack them together to give them dimension. So I just applied craft tacky glue, pressed all these together. So I've got three layers stacked up to give this um, sentiment a bit more weight. And it just, it just looks better in my opinion. So stack those together. And then I did the same thing as I did with the butterfly. I just stuck this to my little paper inking palette. And I'm going to pounce on those same two shades of oxide ink. So the pink peacock feathers and uncharted mariner. And making this card, it reminded me that it's like, oh, some of these oxide inks I need to re-ink these these ink pads <laughs> I use them so much I can just you can start to tell after a while it's like hmm, I need to you know smush them a little harder or press my pouncers into them a little bit more to pick up enough ink it's like yeah it's time it, they're starting to dry out a bit so anyway pounced on the peacock feathers oxide ink and then added the Uncharted Mariner along the bottom and just kind of blended those together so again I get that just kind of ombre sort of look which I just love love so once I've got um that onto the sentiment same thing wipe off my little palette move on to the next step which is what I'm going to do on the inside of the card so I die cut a piece of lightweight cardstock using that state that same double stitch rectangle wafer die I've cleaned off the polka dot scarf stencil and I'm using tumble glass distress ink instead of oxide. Um, I prefer, because since I'm covering the entire background where I'm going to write, you know, to the recipient, I prefer using like regular inks for this, not oxides. It wouldn't make a huge difference, but sometimes I like to be picky. I sometimes find if I use a lot of oxide inks on the insides of my cards, it's a lot harder for my pens to write because they kind of catch on the ink because oxides sit more on top of the cardstock, if that makes sense. So I just switched to the regular distress ink and a lighter hand. I'm using one of the picket fence uh, blending brushes and a light hand and just blend to that pattern. I could have left it just like this. I think it just, it's nice. It gives it that extra something. The stitch line, you know, does the thing, but I wanted to stamp that 
Sarah girl image on the inside as well because I just love it. So I inked that up with the Scorch Timber Distress Oxide ink. So I stuck that panel into my Misty, stamped that with the Scorch Timber Distress Oxide ink, and then I pulled the sentiment from that um, Wreath Building Butterfly Wings set, lined that up, and that I'm going to ink up and stamp with Versafine Claire Nocturne ink. So I got a lot going on in the inside of the card, but that's how I like it. And again, I will just write over, you know, all the things. And this is quite a large panel because this is going to go onto a five by seven card. So this panel's a little bigger than four by six. I think it's like four and a half by six and a half, roughly something like that. Four by six, at least anyway. So once that inside panel is done, now I'm going to start assembling everything for the card front. And I pulled out some Baker's Twine because that's just what I've been obsessed with again in, um, all my card making lately, <laughs> like everything needs Baker's twine. So anyway, wrap that around the card front and then use my little reverse tweezers to hold that knot in place, tied my little bow once I was happy with it, um, trimmed off uh, some of the excess with my scissors. And then um, my card base is some dark chocolate cardstock that I cut to seven inches by 10, scoring that at five inches. So this will be a side fold five by seven card. So I got that scored and reinforced the score with um, just the side of my bone folder. And I did that because I want to use uh, my card front. I'm just going to hold this in place. I'm not adhering anything yet. But this gives me a bit of a guide because I wanted to apply the butterfly and have it kind of hanging off the edge of the card front. But I don't want it to hang past the actual card base itself because I want this to fit in a standard, you know, five by seven envelope. So holding that in place just shows me where I can put this butterfly. So it kind of hangs over the edge for that little extra visual interest, but it doesn't hang past the actual card base. So I adhered the butterfly again, just applying adhesive right where the body is. so The wings are popped up a little bit. And then the little Sarah girl image that I'd colored and die cut, I popped that into place with a bit of foam tape and press that into place. And then I cut some little bits of foam tape to stick behind this die cut sentiment because it needs to adhere over top of all the dimension I just created with the main image there. So got that popped into place. And then um, more foam tape on the back of this panel because I've got the the bulk created from the Baker's Twine plus this will help flatten out um, the background because after applying the paste all the things I did it was still a little bit wonky not much but the foam tape is definitely going to completely fix that for me so I've adhered the panel to the inside of the card just with craft tacky glue and then I'm going to adhere the card front to the card base and then I'm going to adhere those little individual butterflies that I had stamped and colored and fussy cut. And then as my final little like embellishment, I'm going to use uh, my Nouveau, Nouveau Aqua Shimmer pen to add some glitter, which doesn't look like anything when I'm doing this on camera, but I'll show at the end with my flashlight, the actual like glitter and shimmer and everything. So I did the same thing with these butterflies. I applied glue just behind the body and I kind of bent the cardstock a bit so the wings are popped up. And I had to be careful and kind of hold them in place because the glue wasn't dry when I'm using my aqua shimmer pen. So I painted um, the little butterflies, her little hair accessories, even the little braid in her hair with the aqua shimmer pen just to give it that little extra sparkle that I love. And then, yeah, painted all the little wings of these individual butterflies with that as well. So they've got sparkle, but it's not, it's not too crazy. Just when the light picks it up and then you actually see the, the shimmer, which goes nicely too with the sparkle of the um, embossing paste as well, because that... Uh, paper glaze Lux, like straight on, doesn't really look like a whole lot, but in real life and when you tilt it in light, you can see the glitter and it's amazing. I love it. So anyway, there's the shimmer, sparkle, fabulousness. And that finished off this card. So like I mentioned in the intro, I will have links to all the things in the description box below the video. So if you just expand that, there'll be a supply list with links to all the supplies I use. So you can check that out below if you are interested. Thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch this video, for thumbs upping, commenting, letting the robot overlords know you guys like what you're seeing. Subscribe if you haven't, I'd love to have you. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.